Thank you, Dr. Dipenda sir. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. A.K. Mishra sir. He was joined as a lecturer in 1997 in Onasal Police and served as a head and department of political science in WR Government College, Deomari, PR district, more than two decades. He has been selected as an associate of the Indian Institute of Advanced Study, Rastapati Nivas in Simla. He has published two books and a more than 65 of research papers in the national and international journals. He was also the principal of Wangsa Raskumar Government College, Deomari. He was the ethno coordinator and coordinator of distance education at Rajagandhi University, Tanago. He was also the members of the Board of Undergraduate Studies, Rajagandhi University, Itanaga. He is a visiting scholar of Patna University. He is a life member of IPSA, Neha, NEFSA, Indo American Political Science Association. In the appreciation of outstanding performance, the Government of Onasal Pradesh conferred Best Distress Award in the year of 2012 to Dr. Misso. In the year 2019, he joined the Directorate of Higher and Technical Education, Government of Onasal Pradesh, as a State Liaison Officer, NSS, and also holding the post of State Nodal Officer, NEC, SLQAC, All India Survey on Higher and Technical Education. He is also the recipient of Onasal Pradesh State Award on the occasion of Republic Day of 2020 by the Governor of Onasal Pradesh in recognition of the meritorious services rendered by him. His area of interest, research area of interest is uh, types of Onasal Forest, imperative of regional cooperation in South Asia. Now I'd like to request Dr. Akemi Sosa to deliver his piece. Namaskar. Namaskar. Yes. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, most respected chair person of this uh, workshop, Dr. Dipan Das, organizing secretary, Dr. Joges Das, uh, other uh, members of organizing committee, most distinguished uh, delegates from different institutions of Northeast, ladies and gentlemen. I, I welcome you to this uh, virtual workshop a week long workshop on uh, that is national workshop on human rights education and that is being organized by NESR. And uh, I must appreciate the efforts of Dr. Dipan Das, who is always taking pain to organize such academic discourse for all the participants and for all the stakeholders of Northeastern region. And uh, really, I'm very much happy to have such academic discourse for the benefit of the academia of Northeastern region. And your efforts is really praiseworthy. I would like to start by wishing you all and your families my personal best wishes for your health, safety in this difficult time. I would also like to express my profound gratitude to all the organizers and stakeholders of this workshop. Indeed, it is a, a great pleasure for me to be with you during, during this academic discourse on human rights. And I would like to highlight the issues related to human rights, particularly in Northeast India. Here, I will try to focus my deliberations on the different aspects of human rights, such as the concept of human rights, the importance of Northeast region, brief history of human rights, certain aspects of human rights and uh, uh, the constitution of India, and finally, the human rights situations in Northeast India. So this is really a wonderful time uh, with us to have some deliberations on uh, these aspects of human rights. Uh, now, uh, I will start with the issues pertaining to human rights and uh, uh, brief about uh, the importance of the Northeast region. Here we can say that Northeastern states 
have a number of common features such as distant location, difficult terrain, permanently cloudy weather, vast natural resources, and a predominantly tribal way of life. These constitute a highly heterogeneous region with their uniquely separate identities in terms of origin, growth, and history of the various tribes and ethnic groups in this region. The Northeast offers a fascinating area of study to the anthropologists, social scientists, military strategists, and political thinkers too. The, the perennial disturbed status of a large part of the region and the never changing military response of the central government also make the Northeast a subject of great interest for the student of human rights. The region is also crucial in environmental terms because the world's 35 official biodiversity hotspots traverse parts of Northeast India fed by the rivers of mighty Brahmaputra, which flows fr from the Tibetan plateau through the fertile plains of Northeast India and route to the Bay of Bengal via Bangladesh. Accounting for more than one third of India's total water resources are here in the Northeastern region. A massive hydroelectric power program is underway and growing exploration of Northeast India's generous reserves of oil, gas, and minerals are adding a new dimensions to the struggle for autonomy and the self-determination that have dominated the post-independence history of the uh, entire Northeastern region. The government uh, of so India... Hello. Excuse me, sir. So yeah. if I interrupt you, uh, if you have PPT, then you can present. Yes. Do you have PPT, sir? Do you have yeah. PPT, sir? Yeah, PPT I have. Okay, um, now you can present, sir. Should I send? No, no, sir, you can present. I, I, it, it difficult. There is some glitches of, you know, the in my laptop at the moment. I tried, but I am unable to uh, attach at the moment. If you can say, I can just forward it to you. Okay, okay. Please send us. Yeah. Yes, I have seen. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So should I proceed or should wait? Yes, yes, you can continue, sir. Okay. Uh, so here we can say that the presence of the armed groups and ongoing counterinsurgency operations has a tremendous impact on mm -hmm. everyday life and the multi-ethnic dimensions to the conflict in Northeast India often spills over into community relations. In designated disturbed areas, the armed forces enjoy exceptional power, such as suit to kill, warrantless search, seizure and arrest, and immunity from prosecution for their actions. This has caused deep resentment among the region's population. Northeast is the most ethically ethnically diverse region in India. It is the home to around 46 million people, including 213 of the 635 tribal groups listed by the Anthropological Survey of India. The population is predominantly rural with only 12% living in urban areas in the entire region. And the region is extremely diverse in political and socio-economic terms. All the major religions are present, Hinduism, Buddhism from India and Tibet, Islam from sizable Bengali population. After partition, they settled down. 
and uh, Christianity brought by missionaries, the politically and the, po sorry, the political and uh, geography of Northeast India would be radically redrawn in the 1940s with the creation of India and Pakistan as independent states in 1947. And the princely states were given the option to joining either country or staying independent. The response to the central government to unrest in the Northeast has always been shaped by the geostrategic significance of the region, which has 99% of the international border and only 1% domestic border. The deployment of army and other armed forces to the center that began with outbreak of the armed Naga struggle in the mid 1950s has continued unabated. The effort all along has been to deal with the violence military instead of addressing its underlying causes and conditions. Besides resulting in a heavy militarization of the entire environment, this approach has corroded the ability of the states to develop and maintain a viable apparatus of their own to execute the responsibility of maintaining law and order in the region. If we cite an example of the Northeast, it is an area of a special significance from the viewpoint of human rights. Then the complicity of the governance, economic backwardness, varying levels of development, and a lack of political awareness of the general public have added to the responsibilities of these states to promote the economic and social rights of their people while respecting and guarding their cultural heritage. Here we have to uh, see that we, the people of Northeasterns are very keen to preserve their cultural heritage. That's why they have also got an opportunity to preserve their rights under sixth schedule of Indian constitution. So, permanently and heavy presence of the army and other armed forces in the area of normal policing and civil administration have rendered the people of this region more vulnerable to violations of their human rights than their counterparts in rest of the India. Now, coming to the concept of human rights, this concept has gained a momentum through a long history and uh, it is not possible uh, to describe all the history here but i would like to mention the post world war history of national and international governance is predominantly marked by the concerns of promoting the universal respect for an observance of human rights and fundamental freedoms for all without distinction of any kind the United Nations role in setting norms and standards and evolving procedures and mechanism to secure the implementation of human rights in both historic as well as revolutionary. This process of internationalization and globalization of the concept of human rights has had great impact on the constitution making and nation building process not only in our country, but in the rest of the world during that time. You see the paradox uh, of the Second World War as because United States of America and former USSR both have fought against the Axis power during the Second World War. But just after termination of Second World War, both, uh, I mean, uh, the United States of America and former USSR have taken the different paths. One advocated the communist ideology and another one is uh, 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 the capitalist ideology. So these were the dividing factors. And after that, the world we are witnessing uh, uh, the Second World, uh, this uh, Cold War situation. So, so we can say that these all were direct or indirect impact on, you know, the formulation of uh, uh, this, you know, the um, human rights. And despite genuine efforts by national and international machinery, human rights messages are not reaching to the 
vulnerable groups like uh, Dalits, women, children, bonded laborers are still in few parts of our country, tribals and minorities. The complex social norms and practices besides political legal compulsions come in the way to ensure human rights of all individuals. Generally, rights are defined as claims of the individual recognized by the society and enforced by the state, which are considered crucial claim and without which no one can in general seek to be at one's best self. The term human rights is however much broader than the term rights in so far as it means as random house encyclopedia records that I'm, I'm quoting the powers, conditions of existence and possession which has individual has claims for title by virtue of being human, unquote. These are those rights which are inherent in human nature and which are absolutely essential for living as human beings. These are essential conditions for our full development of personality as well as for the use of our human qualities, intelligence and conscience for satisfying our needs and our interests. Human rights are rights independent of particular conditions of social recognition as these are inherent in the very nature of a human being as a conscious self-respecting human individual. So I think that the human rights really gets a uh, such importance for the development of the personality of the human being as a whole. These are the very basis of human life, dignity and worth. These are natural and essential conditions of happy and prosperous living of all the people of the world. Human rights are moral, legal and political device protecting the dignity, well-being and survival of the human beings and based on the principles of respecting each individual. Uh, many of the former speakers have already spoke about uh, the first generation, second generation, third generation of human rights. At last, I will give a brief focus on these, but these are correlated terms uh, and uh, related to the human rights. Fundamental assumption is that each person is a moral and rational being who deserves to be treated with dignity. Preconditions of humanity in in, is incorporating in universality of the concept. While nations or specific groups can enjoy specific rights that apply only to them, human rights are the rights to which each person is entitled regardless of any other personal specific qualities. However, practical history of last 72 years present more than universal respect universal violation of human rights. If initially it was topically believed that human rights violators are consequences of lack of political will to protect them, today it becomes more and more evident that human rights violations are ordered by the states, justified by the legislation and judicial system, which assesses the legislation within non-discrimination paradigm which means that abolishment of certain rights can be justified if it is abolished for everyone and not only for a, a specific group of people. Here, I would like to mention uh, that, uh, you know, uh, uh, a brief history uh, of human rights as because human rights as we define them today are not self-evident. Uh, and from the beginning of the time, it is a manner as human society developed, also different political concepts emerged over the period of time. In the historical perspective, one can distinct for major periods in human rights development in the early times, that is antique and afterwards Renaissance and Enlightenment era, the focus was primarily on political rights, 
after the industrial revolution, economic and social rights were promoted. And after the second world war, so-called third generation of human rights dealing with individuals well-being became important and it was followed by the cyber rights which are not that much rights but started to implement the previous sets of rights in the newly developing virtual environment here i would like to mention that uh, uh, we are talking about first generation second generation third generation but here uh, this is my personal perception that during modern periods more things should be incorporated under the umbrella concept of uh, uh, human rights as because now we are facing a lot uh, regarding cyber crime then we are talking about the protection of environment and the uh, uh, entire world is facing the environmental issues. So these should also be incorporated in broader terms uh, under the umbrella concept of uh, 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 human rights. So throughout much of history, people executed, I, I, I mean, enjoyed uh, uh, their rights and responsibilities with, uh, within different social groups, a family, a nation, a religion, a class, a community, or a state. Regardless of historical and geographical background, most societies have traditions similar to the golden rule. Here, this is very important, which I am mentioning of do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. The, uh, unquote, the Hindu Vedas, the Babylonian code of Hammurabi, the Bible, the Quran, and the Intellects of the Confucius are five of the oldest written sources which addresses, you know, uh, um, these all uh, addresses uh, the questions of people's duties, rights, and responsibilities. Nowadays, reciprocity principles still exist in religious contexts in the certain societies. You can take an example of uh, many, uh, you know, the independent nation of Far East societies and in certain African tribes also. Within the concept of Western civilization, documents asserting individual rights, such as Magna Carta of 1215, Habeas Corpus Act of 1679, the English Bill of Rights of 1600. 89 and the French Declaration of Human Rights, Ma Rights of Men and Citizens in 1789, and the US Constitution 1787, and Bill of Rights, that is an integral part of the Constitution of India uh, uh, of 1791, are the written uh, prosecutions of many of the uh, today's human rights documents. For the first time in history, Magna Carta established the principle that everybody, including the king, is subject to the law. Earlier, you see, uh, now many political scientists, you know, have uh, saying that uh, uh, the state is the march of God on earth and uh, they have, you know, the uh, great respect for their kings. Even, you know, you can cite an example of Louis uh, XVI of France that how uh, during that, you know, the worst conditions of the society, the people have firm beliefs uh, in, in, you know, the king. So uh, these are these are the certain things they, where we can uh, correlate the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And uh, uh, you, also we can cite an example of the European Conventions of Human Rights. Now, Declaration of Human Rights, as uh, uh, we all know, uh, acting under the provisions of the United Nations Charter, the Human Rights Commission was established by the United Nations Economic and Social Council in February 1946. And this commission was directed to prepare recommendation and report on uh, these, you know, the all human rights which we are uh, having at the moment. And uh, I'm not going to discuss all these things. These are there in my presentation. I have shared and uh, uh, it can be shared uh, with all of you by the uh, organizers. Now, human rights are uh, really a very important rights, whether it is a civil and political rights, 
whether it is economic and social rights, whether it is a cultural rights. The concept has been extended further by acknowledging group rights, such as the rights to development, right to clean environment, right to food, right to peace, etc. Human rights have now been integrated with the human development as both share the same vision and have common goals of establishing a just and humane society, securing to every member of the human family the two basic freedoms that, it, that is freedom from fear and freedom from want. Human rights and the Constitution of India. Our country is privileged to have a right-based constitution as because our constitution recognizes the worth of human rights in its preamble and incorporates civil and political rights as fundamental rights in chapter third of the Indian constitution and economic and so economic, social and cultural rights have been enumerated under the uh, principle of directive principles of a state policy under part four of the Indian constitution. Though directive principles of a state policy are non-justiciable, apart they have been declared fundamental to the governance of the country and a number of economic and social rights mentioned by way of directive principles have acquired the status of fundamental rights by judicial intervention. The Supreme Court's interpretation of the world life, particularly the word life, uh, we have under Article 21, uh, right to life, that is mentioned under Article 21 to mean not merely animal existence or survival, but a life with dignity. Here, uh, we have to give more focus on dignity of the individual. That has the effect of the transforming the directive principles of a state policy related to primary education, nutrition of the children, standards of, of living, non-exploitative working conditions, etc., as uh, like a fundamental rights in our uh, uh, constitution. Human rights have thus been taken beyond the realm of philosophical statements or moral principles and accorded a practical shape by their incorporation in the constitution and domestic laws of our country. Any democratic country governed by the rule of law is obliged to ensure practical realization of human rights by all without distinction of any kind and provide for an effective mechanism to protect these rights from the state as well as non-state actors. As yesterday, one of our speakers from Manipur, he was stating that how non-state actor can play a very decisive and important role even submitting its report regarding the violation of human rights. So uh, the higher judiciary in India plays an important role in the wrestle of the citizens' grievances of violation of their human rights. The instrument of public interest litigation in our country has become very effective way of securing the human rights of socially disadvantaged and econ economically handicapped persons of our country. And accordingly, we can say that the government of India in the year 1993 set up a National Human Rights Commission. And that was an in important step in the, the growth of the human rights movements in independent India. The commission was constituted under the Protection of Human Rights Act 1993 with the specific objectives of ensuring better protection of human rights in the country. And accordingly, the commission is tasked to promote awareness and spread human rights literacy among the various sections of society. The commission is also required to review the efficacy of the safeguards provided in various laws for the protection of human rights and examine conditions of jails, uh, hospitals, and observations regarding homes and encourage the efforts of NGOs particularly which are working in the field of the human rights. 
in order to realize its ultimate objective of creating a human rights culture in our country. Now coming to the human rights situation in the Northeast India, we can say here that in account of the human rights violation in India, the Northeast would certainly find a prominent place like uh, 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 Jammu and Kashmir, Kashmir earlier, uh, it was in Punjab. And uh, we can say here that the Northeast uh, really present an area where the harassment of the general public at the end, uh, 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 particularly at the hands of the armed uh, 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 people uh, that uh, began in the Northeastern region during mid 50s when Naga insurgency started. And uh, as uh, the trouble also spread later to Mizoram, Manipur and Tripura, more troops were rushed to the region and more brutal methods were employed to control the situation. A strafing of civilian areas and the groupings of villages turned army operations into a tough rivalry, making more distinction between combatants and non-combatants. These, uh, these were uh, cited by uh, the former DGP of Nagaland uh, during the year 1993 uh, uh, or 96. Even in Manipur, uh, 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 you can uh, see the situation of the deployment of army. And there is a, uh, several uh, uh, examples of the classes between armed forces and civilians in these areas. Dozens of rebel groups uh, control a small swaths of territory and state-sponsored village defense forces are being established in Manipur and more and more households own their own weapon. Then Apapsa, uh, uh, we can say, is, is at the heart of the feared security apparatus that un underpins de facto military rule in much part of the northeastern region uh, still in four of you know uh, the states of northeast uh, uh, in manipur in nagaland in assam and in certain parts of arunachal pradesh uh, this is still in operation so uh, decision to designate an area as disturbed are taken by the central government often with this regard for the wishes of the state legislature and uh, this is very common and uh, you can cite an example. Uh, you see a growing number of international human rights organizations, including the United Nations, have also, uh, you know, uh, uh, called repeatedly to, to think on these lines, uh, to repeal these all, you know, the acts which hampering the human rights anywhere or any part of the country. Here we can cite uh, that uh, these operations are regularly followed by the Creed Apafsa has been used in conjunction with a host of other national security counter-terrorism laws, including uh, UAPA, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, uh, National Security Act at the moment, TADA and POTA have already been repealed. But, but uh, uh, these, these were, you know, uh, uh, to, to hamper, uh, we can say, the rights of the people. Counterinsurgency and human rights uh, protesters in uh, Delhi also uh, demanded the repeal of APAFSA. Women protesting rape by uh, any, you know, the armed uh, forces or uh, by others, uh, uh, police burning dead bodies of uh, um, any, you know, the terrorist uh, unhumanly and uh, these all created a lot of problem. Even you can cite an example of Assam uh, during, uh, you know, the uh, 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 alpha um, uh, uh, time. And human rights uh, abuses are synonyms with the Armed Forces Special Power Act, AFAFSA, of uh, 1958, which introduced in response to Naga insurgency in this Northeastern area and Till now, uh, it, it is being imposed uh, in uh, certain parts of Northeastern, uh, you know, the territory. In the tiny fraction of the cases where criminal complaints 
against the army are initiated, the central government must give permission for the prosecution uh, to go ahead. In February, uh, just I'm citing an example of uh, February 2012, uh, the two members of uh, uh, the Supreme Court judges said of Afsa's immunity ought not to cover cases in which crimes such as murder to, uh, or rape were committed. Uh, you see, uh, so uh, trials would recognize as uh, uh, draconian security powers and uh, uh, you can say that impose a permanent state of emergency in certain parts of the region. So these are also uh, striking factors. And uh, the families of traffic children are duped by bogus assurance about education or training when domestic uh, substitute or begging is what uh, really awaits. The presence of a few genuinely uh, matrilineal societies in the Northeastern region gives the impression of the gender equality, but still violence against women is widespread. And even uh, uh, a few customary laws often enshrines discrimination. The cases of domestic violence is also common regardless of the background, the status of education is still normal for many. And uh, we, can, we can also say that the Domestic Violence Act of 2005 is supposed to provide free legal advice and shelter for victims, but it has not been adequately funded for implementation in this region. The Indian constitution was amended in 1993 to stipulate that 33% of the elected seats in local uh, state and national election must be reserved for women but the actual representation of the women remains low at just 10% across India. Uh, now problems facing women and children in, uh, you know, uh, during uh, uh, the height of the uh, Alpha uprising between 1990 or 93, some 10,000 peoples were arrested and detained under the terrorist and Disruptive Activities Act. Only a few fraction of these people had any connection to that militant organization. Most were released without charge after several months or after several years. Many alleging, uh, you know, mistreatment uh, by the authorities. Scarcely 100 of those detained uh, were ever prosecuted. Uh, am, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are able. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, sir. Uh, so later on, uh, this, this, you know, the atrocities against many, you know, the sections of the society were the great concern. And uh, nevertheless, we can say that despite impressions in India that women in Northeast India inhabit a more liberal culture uh, than their mainland counterparts. This is uh, to, to many extent a reality. But uh, still, we can say that we have to do a lot in the region for women and children, particular, particularly uh, for the uh, vulnerable situations because of the conflict in the region, especially those in indigenous minority and low income communities. Here we can, we can say that uh, these are the uh, many features uh, that should be deliberated under the concept of human rights. And uh, 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 here, uh, I would like to mention that uh, corruption. Yesterday, one of uh, the speaker was also talking about it. This is also very, very important aspects that this corruption in, is all pervasive in economic and political life. Huge payment of the counterinsurgencies and development are made directly even to the armed forces and uh, the expenditure is not uh, properly budget budgeted or accounted. Records are falsified and staples like rice, sugar, kerosene, uh, destined for the rural uh, poor are uh, uh, purloined by corrupt officials, uh, you know, and the other stakeholders. And this is also one of the great concern in the entire Northeastern region. There are large reserves of the crude oil the majority of which has so far been found in Assam. 
the exploration is taking place across the region, there is concern that this money will instead disappear into the coffers of uh, corporations and uh, uh, the multinational company or uh, the government organization, the federal government and the uh, uh, only because of uh, uh, the corrupt, uh, you know, the local officials too. Uh, so uh, uh, minorities, indigenous communities also widely believe that uh, uh, the job go to the migrants from other parts of India. Perhaps the greatest concern about the future of the Northeast India's natural resources is uh, that alleged link between military security apparatus and the new uh, extractive and uh, uh, hydroelectric uh, power projects particularly. In 2001, the Indian government established the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region, Donor Ministry, to accelerate development through ambitious infrastructure projects. Uh, today, we can say the government is focusing a lot to develop the entire region and uh, giving a uh, fund for the developmental activities of the Northeastern Region. And uh, the more focus is being given uh, 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 to the Northeastern region at the moment. However, a parallel economy uh, fueled by drugs and guns, particularly in the Northeastern region, uh, flourishes with both the security forces and the rebel groups said to be involved in these things. And from over the border in Burma, the Golden Triangle now reaches the uh, the, the, the jungles of uh, Nagaland and Manipur and uh, from Mizoram and uh, uh, it is now, uh, you know, uh, from uh, through National Highway 39, now it is known as Asian Highway Number 2, a road that runs from Imphal to Gohati via Dimapur, uh, has become an important trafficking route. Uh, intravenous drug use has left Manipur, uh, as we know, with one of of the highest HIV positive rate, uh, you know. So, so these, these uh, uh, certain aspects uh, uh, in relation to our entire Northeastern region must be addressed uh, properly. Uh, then uh, uh, I, I, I can uh, uh, cite here, according to Vision 2020 document produced by donor department long back in the year 2008, the goal is progress and prosperity through the harnessing of resources such as the vast hydroelectric potential, land minerals wealth, forests, tea, uh, presented as an articulation of the people's wishes. The vision built an a World Bank report of 2007 which called for a resource-led strategy for general development with hydroelectric power projects alone said to have the potential to double the region's state domestic products. So we have a lot of potentialities here in Northeastern region. Even you see the government of India has initiated a policy called Lucas policy and the present government has uh, called it active policy as because Assam and Gohati can be treated as a gateway and, and the North is Northeastern region can also gateway to the uh, Southeast Asian countries, ASEAN and uh, the other nations. Uh, so these are uh, very important aspects where we can, uh, you see, uh, uh, um, um, uh, address uh, all these things properly for a better development of the Northeastern region. Here, I would like to mention that uh, India is justifiably proud of, uh, uh, you know, the free press and pluralistic media. But uh, still, there is a lot of uh, uh, debate going on regarding portraying, uh, particularly the Northeast in uh, different angles by mainland India. Even uh, uh, they are not having much focus to address, to fo and, uh, you know, to highlight the problems of the Northeastern uh, region, uh, uh, particularly. At the same time, uh, here it can be said that uh, uh, the multiple insurgencies and counter-insurgencies operations uh, make the region too dangerous for 
foreign journalist uh, earlier but now the situation is not like that uh, now uh, the situation is uh, much much better and uh, they should be uh, uh, permitted uh, to come and uh, report about you know the particularly uh, uh, deprivation of the people of the entire uh, northeastern region many things are there I, I am not going to discuss all these things here but here I can mention that uh, uh, you know although the overall situations in the northeast has improved particularly in recent years and efforts are on to find a negotiated settlement of the complex uh, this Naga problem too with the government of India uh, the talk is going on with Naga rebel group of I am with the government of India and uh, we have to do a lot in this uh, regard and the state human rights commission in place uh, in Assam and Manipur have no jurisdiction in regard to the violation of human rights by the members of the armed forces and therefore uh, uh, this uh, should also properly be addressed and the uh, national human rights commission besides being distant has no worthwhile powers to make any effective interventions in this regard. This is the sad reality of the state of civil and political rights of the people of Northeast region. And uh, the economic and social rights incorporated as the directive principles of the state policy are now being acknowledged increasingly as more significant in the concept of nation building and socio-economic transformation based on the principle of democracy, equity, and justice. A comprehensive review of the human rights situation in the Northeast is therefore required to include the state of economic and social rights to the people, regardless of the fact that most of these rights are presently treated as non-justiciable. In, in, uh, particularly, in my opinion, the state of these rights in the Northeast presents much gloomier picture than what is seen in respect of the civil and political rights. One human rights of the people of Northeast, which is found to be violated more glaring and massively is the right to human governance, which means corruption-free governance with focus on serving the common interest of the general public rather than the special interest of the elite, elite corpus or bureaucrats or elected representatives, you, you, you see. So more focus should be given to the uh, different pockets, uh, I mean the poor sections of the society. Northeast is an area blessed by nature with abundance of water resources. There are many pockets where people are facing shortage of drinking water still. So these are the uh, prime concern and it should be uh, addressed properly. And now, yeah, now I would like to mention uh, certain other aspects uh, hurriedly as because uh, uh, we are running a shortage of time. Uh, but, but here uh, uh, we can say that uh, uh, in, uh, in Northeastern region particularly, uh, the, the report clearly establishes that the central government has uh, many occasions failed to find political solution to the problems of the Northeastern states, even in present situation, choosing instead uh, to resort to extensive militarization and repressive legislation, such as uh, uh, this APAPSA uh, Armed Force Special Power Act and in the bargain it has distanced itself from the social, economic and cultural ground realities and the needs and aspirations of the people of Northeast region. This distancing has also mean that it turns a blind eye to the distinctions between the varied struggles of communities that ranges from uh, assertions for greater autonomy to the demand for separate states. So these sentiments of the people of the Northeastern region should be addressed properly. And before coming uh, uh, to conclude, I would like to mention uh, certain, certain, you know, the important uh, aspects as yesterday, uh, also it has already been discussed. But here I would like to mention uh, the few aspects that uh, many, you know, the uh, organizations, 
organizations are working that is uh, non governmental organizations are working for the uh, uh, betterment of the people and uh, sixth schedule is also being provided but but these all should be uh, properly implemented uh, for the betterment of the people of the northeast region and only then uh, we can have a particular you know uh, uh, solution uh, of the problem uh, now now uh, we can say that many uh, non governmental organization like milan foundation acid survivors uh, sahas foundation kat katha majlis manch committee for legal aid to poor give india etc are working nicely but a lot has to be uh, achieved uh, by 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 the respective uh, you know the groups or respective uh, uh, this um, ngos here uh, uh, we should also uh, try to focus about the task of amnesty international but i am not going to discuss all these things amnesty international founded in the year 1961 and it has also uh, uh, got the nobel prize in the year 1977 there are certain bias you know the views of amnesty international but it is working to protect you know the uh, uh, human rights of the citizens of the world and at the moment more than 7 million members and supporters are attached to the amnesty international all 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 around the world and uh, 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 one one thing which i would like to mention regarding the div divisions of the uh, human rights into three categories and that was initially proposed in the year 1979 by the Czech jurist Koral Vasak at the International Institute of Human Rights and it taken root also in the international law and jurisprudence that is first generation second generation and third generation uh, uh, just i would like to mention that first generation is particularly related with civil and political right of the individual second generation related to the socio uh, economic social and cultural rights of the people and third generation is related rights as a collective level for communities populations societies or the nations as a whole and lastly uh, i would like to mention that there is an urgent need for launching people's movement for the realization of the basic human rights and fundamental freedoms of the people of northeast region academic institutions citizens groups media persons from states outside northeast can play a vital role in this endeavor the center for northeast studies and policy research founded by the eminent journalist and writer uh, sri sanjay hazarika has also taken earlier you know the challenge as part of its effort to build a bridge between the people of the northeast and rest of india so apart from the initiative of the government of northeast india the non state actors the ngos will also have to play a proactive role to protect the human rights of the people in the entire region particularly ngos are like eyes and ears of the society working for the protection of human rights they should relentlessly to safeguard the rights of all human beings and to be vigilant against child labor atrocities on women dowry female fertility trafficking of women and children protection of the marginalized people and the various issues that lower the dignity and violate the rights of the human being so uh, these are uh, uh, the theme of my deliberations and uh, uh, um, my dear esteemed uh, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen let me finally wish you a successful virtual workshop ahead and i hope that it will be beneficial for all of us thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to have a certain uh, you know the discussion and sharing my ideas uh, with the intellect of the northeast region thank you thank you sir thank you sir for your wonderful deliberation now the session is open for interaction if participants have Uh, you know they are worries they can raise
they can make the yeah. interaction with the vicious person. Even your comments, your suggestions. Yes, I, yes, sir. I, I have shared my, you know, the uh, presentation. There are certain, uh, you know, the correction is required. A uh, letter I will uh, send my final paper uh, uh, to you, uh, the organizer, and that can be shared with the uh, participants also. So, if you have any observations, any query, any remarks, you are most welcome. Sir, good afternoon, sir. A uh, good afternoon. Uh, sir, please provide uh, your PPT, sir, and some <laughs> study material. Sure, sure, sure. I, yes, I have okay. already okay. Uh, yes. organized. Yes. And rather, thank it you, will sir. Be thank you. Sir. Also, I also think that it should be reached to each stakeholders uh, for better, you know, the understanding. And even uh, I, 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 I hope that uh, uh, you, you can. Uh, uh, give certain suggestions after having that, you know, the paper also. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Any else? The participant have any, uh, any queries? I would like to request that there is a question in the chat box. Please read out the question so that our research person can uh, in an indirect. Yes, one question comes from. One question comes from. Doctor Ritu Mani Haroi. How do you see the recent ongoing violence in Assam and its neighboring states of northeast India? Uh, uh, regarding regarding recent uh, uh, violence, particularly in terms of. Uh, the border disputes uh, also uh, that you know the uh, one one uh, webinar has already been organized uh, there are uh, certain uh, things and uh, as yesterday one of uh, the uh, uh, spokesperson and uh, one of uh, the eminent scholar from northeast was uh, talking about ethnicity you see uh, as, as I have uh, mentioned in my uh, presentation also, Northeast in itself a miniature India. We can see here a diverse culture, diverse group of peoples used to reside. You see, so it, in a multicultural society, ethnicity uh, will must be there. We cannot, but, but we have, if we have any issues arises, then it should properly be addressed. We can cite, you know, the problem of, uh, uh, Bodo area um, earlier, you, you see how how there was a problem with migrants uh, with the native Boro people, like like uh, the issues of uh, uh, disputes with uh, Mizoram, uh, with, with other states too. Uh, so uh, this 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 also depends on the political will and uh, uh, the political uh, leaders. They have to be proactive. Even the uh, NGOs and some civil groups can help assist. And uh, if we have a mutual understanding, if we respect the rights and liberty of each other, then I think that there should be no uh, issue uh, with any you know, the neighboring states of Northeast. Thank you. Any other questions? questions from the participants? I think no worries from the participant. Okay, thank you, sir, for your nice deliberation. We have been enlightened by your deliberation. I again, thank you, sir, for giving us your PCS time as a resource person. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Now the session is uh, end here. Now I would like to announce assessment. We are going to start the assessment process. The link for the assessment and feedback will be available in the set box, Zoom. The entire process will be complete. Please inform Dr. Dugas does that the entire process will be completed by 30 minutes.
Okay, this does please stop the record.